<laughs> well, I think that you should never quit. That's what croquet is all about. And I have a little story that uh, illustrates that, and that is the story of Cinderella. Now, you all remember that story that uh, where her fairy godmother said, Look, Cindy, if you're not in bed by midnight, you might as well come home. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, okay. so I'll tell it to you uh, in a, a back-assward manner. And uh, that is the story of Cinderella, who lived in an old heart house with her mean old nuts to other and her two sisty uglers, and uh, they dressed Cindy in wordy dags and made her do all the wordy dirt while they sat around all day cheating out clits and making realism. <laughs> One day when Cinderella was in the kitchen flopping the moor, who should come home with the two sisty uglers? And he said, guess what? Transom Hints is growing at Fancy's restaurant, and we're invited. Too bad you can't come. Cinderella went back into the kitchen with ears in her ties. And she was just about to chick a sea of frickin'. <laughs> Suddenly there was a winding flash of flight, and right before her very eyes there appeared a fairy godmother. And uh, or a beautiful fairy, and she said, Who are you and what do you want? And she said, I'm your very fodgather, and I've come to grant your any wish. <laughs> and uh, so uh, Cinderella said, Well, I, I hear the Prince of Hints is uh, growing uh, a dancey thrust brawl. <laughs> I'd like to go. Well, Mary Fodgather said, okay, and one wave of her magic wand, she changed Cinderella into a blavishing Rudy. She was all dressed in a white sound and gash and had on a necklace of poobies and merles. <laughs> and, uh, on, her on her feet were a tiny pair of sass clippers. And our fairy godmother said, there's only one condition, Cindy, and that is you have to be known by midnight." <laughs> and, okay, and off she went. And soon she cast to the camel. That's came to the castle. <laughs> Who should be the first poo people she met but the two sisty uglers? <laughs> Cinderella was so beautiful that they didn't uh, recognize her. And um, so they introduced her to the Prince of Hints. And uh, he said, May I Dave this chance? And uh, while they were dancing, he also said, uh, You're so beautiful. You remind me of beefing Slooty. <laughs> she, was all, she was all dressed in a white sound and gash, and she had on a, on a, a, a necklace of poobies and rolled on her feet with these tiny sass clippers. And so uh, he said, uh, <laughs> I haven't told this for a long time. <laughs> so he said, uh, just then there was a, a struck Clark and a strike swell. So Cinderella had the hand from the raw. But on the way out, one of her tiny sass slippers slipped from her soot. In other words, she slopped her dripper. And, uh, I have to leave out a couple of jokes here. The X rated. Uh, anyway, Prince of Hints, he says, uh, he's, uh, uh, now I have to go into town to uh, find out uh, who, who is the woman that I've long and fucked. <laughs> whom I've long and fucked. So the next day he goes into town with his, uh, with his henchmen and they go from the top, n door to door and uh, they knock on every door and pretty soon they come to the sin where House Durello is. <laughs> and they were going from house to house and you really can't change that around. <laughs> so he knocked on the door and who should come to the door but two sisty uglers. Prince said, uh, Francis Hint says, I'm looking for the woman who set this slipper sit so I'll know with whom I belong in the they uh, So the uh, first ugly s sister says, or sisty ugler says, she tried on the slipper. And, but her beat were too thick. <laughs> and uh, then it was the second sister's turn, and it was the same thing. But then Cindy showed up, and uh, her, she tried on the slipper, and it pitted 
set it perfectly, <laughs> fit it perfectly. <laughs> and so uh, they were married and have little ye ever after. <laughs> and that is the story of uh, Cinderella and the glass slipper. And, but the moral of this story is that you should never quit. Now, we're all, uh, I think it would be interesting if some of us said how they got interested in the, in the sport of croquet. Because, uh, you know, it's, it's, a not, it's a hard sport to promote. And if we knew stories of how these, everybody here got interested in it, it might help us uh, promote the, the sport. Because if we can never quit, and that's, uh, you know, when you're out in that court, as Pablo was today, and uh, I noticed he, they pegged him one ball out and he was looking for the shot that was going to get him back in there, but he never quit. He said, oh sure, I'm going to make that. And uh, so, uh, the, the thing is, like Christopher Columbus never quit. And if he had, we, you wouldn't have to be sitting around here tonight listening to this BS. <laughs> <laughs> so, and there's a lot of people, you know, there's Brian Mulroney and, uh, in all deference to the Americans here, George Bush. I wish I would quit. <laughs> You're here. here. <laughs> so, you know, as you go down the roadway of life, uh, never give up, never quit. Because the moral is, some of our smubbles are trawl, and some of our rubbles are tree. <laughs> if our tread had no hubbles, how would we recognize our wrestlers? <laughs>